pi. So I have done, once again, a Newton's cradle experiment, but this time with bigger marbles. Now, the advantage of bigger marbles is that they have more surface to attach things on. So what I've done is I have attached these cylindrical wooden dowels to, um, to, to it. This one broke off just a minute ago, but I have already done all the experiments. So with these cylindrical wooden dowels, as I let the ball swing, they can pass through the photogate. And that's a big advantage. So now we can measure the timings. We don't have to use slow motion cameras anymore. We don't have to count the frames anymore. We can just let them swing through the timers and the timers will give us the timings. So there should be no more discussion about velocities anymore. Of course there will be because all my, my data list over here proves the opposition wrong. Um, I, have, I have done 80 trials, 80 of them. Um, I have recorded all of them and I will upload them in a separate video. So I only have like three velocities that, that, that we wanted to know whether or not they bounce back with half the velocity and whether or not momentum is conserved. So all we need is the incoming velocity and then the reflections. So I'm going to make myself smaller here, put myself in the corner. So I have 80 trials, 80. The mass of the small ball is 0.3275 kilograms. The mass of the heavy ball is 0.9335 kilograms. It's not exactly a one to three mass ratio. It's more of 2.8 2 mass ratio, but that's the best I could find. That's the closest I could find um, for the one to three mass ratio with the marbles that I have. So, this column here shows us the momentum before collision. So the initial momentum before collision. This is the momentum of the small ball reflecting back. This is the momentum of the big ball going forward. And this is the list with the momentum as, as we treated it when we treat it as a vector. So for conventional science, this will this will show us whether or not momentum is conserved. Um, and then over here, we have the list with momentum at, when we treat it as a scalar. So that's for the opposition uh, who believes that direction of not matter for momentum, that we always have to treat momentum as positive values. And so over here, we have a list with error percentages. So the error percentage for momentum. So for conventional science, over here, the blue one, this is the error percentage for conventional science. Um, what we see is we have a bunch of negative and positive error percentages. When it's negative, that means that we have lost momentum. When it's positive, that means we have gained too much momentum. So it's all it always it always fluctuates between losing a bit of momentum or gaining a bit, a bit of momentum. And so at at the at the bottom here, I I have the average uh, error percentage which is positive 4.32%. So out of eight, out of 80 trials, the average error percentage is positive 4.32%, which means we have on average gained a little bit too much momentum. Free momentum, you might say. But then let's take a look at the other column, which is DS error or draft science error or the, uh, the considered, so, for the opposition who believes that momentum is always positive and that we always had to add them together. In this case, we have we see we always see positive error percentages over 100 percent consistently. On average, the error percentage for the opposition for draft science is 100 positive 117 percent 117 so every single trial all 80 of them are insane free momentum experiments according to them according to the opposition so 
And for conventional signs, the average error percentage, error percentage, oh, error percentage, yes, is positive 4.32%. So I think it's pretty obvious uh, for whom the uh, momentum is conserved. Momentum is pretty much conserved for conventional signs. Now, let's take a look at the velocities. Do they bounce back with half the velocity after collision? Well, over here. So when it's half the velocity, that means it should go twice as slow as the initial velocity. Over here, I, I have the average velocity. So it, it says 1.78, so on average, the small ball reflecting back, on average, it went 1.78 times slower. It, to be ideally, it should have been around two times as slow, but it went 1.78 times slower. So it actually went faster consistently. Now, the heavy ball, on average, went 1.91 times slower than the initial velocity. Ideally, it should have been around two, but it is 1.91 uh, times slower. So still a little bit too fast. So as you can see, they did not bounce off uh, with the exact ratio. The small mass reflected back with um, and went 1.78 times slower and heavy, but a heavy uh, ball went 1.91 times slower, but still quite close to two. 1.78 versus 1.91. Again, I think it has to do with the fact that they are not perfectly one to three mass ratios. So I think that's that's all we want to know. Um, yep. I think the results are speaking for themselves. Um, when we treat momentum as a scalar, we get insane free momentum experiments. And so all 80 trials, there must be something wrong with them because they are insane free momentum experiments. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. That's it. Enough.